Hello and welcome to part two of Market Failures and Government Intervention. So if you can recall, we started this topic last week and went through in details how the markets work, the different types of market systems, and we really closed in on how the invisible hand of demand and supply works. And the final assumption was that if everything works perfect in a perfectly competitive market, the invisible hand of demand and supply effectively allocates resources. But I guess we all know that doesn't always happen. So when that doesn't happen, what occurs is what we refer to as market failures. Market failures occur when the demand and supply system doesn't work as well, and the individual decisions people make do not always lead to socially desirable outcomes. So you might think, so what would that be? So probably somebody does, say, buys or sells certain goods, and then the rest of the population suffers really badly. And when the invisible hand of demand and supply doesn't work that well, it leaves room for government to intervene. And this is what we're going to discuss more today. And at the end of this lecture, you'll have an exercise which we'll look I look forward to discussing with you in class. Sometimes when things do not go as usual or as expected to, to have the most socially desirable outcomes, we have government intervening. And when government intervenes, it's, some, it's most of the time to fix externalities. And what are externalities? Externalities are when people make decisions that have an impact on a third party. For example, you're cooking with firewood and the smoke blows into your neighbor's house. When you were cooking, you were not thinking of the impact the smoke would have on the neighbor, and probably the neighbor has a baby that's sleeping and the baby wakes up coughing. So that would be a negative externality for that neighbor. But then probably you're playing loud music and the neighbor loves that music as well, and you end up entertaining that neighbor as well. You might consider that to be a positive externality. So when government intervenes, it's most of the time to allocate these resources with a socially desirable outcome and also weigh in on how to correct negative or positive externalities. But you might wonder, what's going on in the world? Everything is not so perfect and there are governments in most countries. So why is nothing or not, why is everything not that perfect? Well, I like to say that sometimes government intervention does not necessarily improve the situation. But why? Governments fail to. We all know that, yeah. And sometimes, and as always happens in the real world, information is not always complete. So government may not always have the complete information to deal with the problem. And of course, when we sit down, it's a complex world. Intervention is not always that direct. Sometimes, Need intervention is more intervention and it's a lot more complicated than it looks. So, given this background and what we've learned from the previous lectures, let's look at an exercise that I'll, I'll be so happy for you to think about and look forward to discuss in class. Imagine a usual imaginary town called Bunga Town and assume there's a persistent increase in slum dwellings, street squatters, so that means that it's a problem with the housing market. Do you think the government should intervene? How should the government intervene? What would be the outcome of such intervention? And would that intervention be optimal? And I guess you, should, you can recall that an optimal policy is one in which the marginal cost and the marginal benefits of implementation are equal. So think about this, come up with your answers, with your suggestions, and I look forward to discussing this class with you. Thank you.